Invasive Fungal Infections Breakthroughs in Special Populations Upon completion of this module, you should be able to define invasive fungal infection breakthroughs in special populations. Also, you should be able to identify the factors associated with breakthrough invasive fungal infection. Finally, you should be able to discuss special populations risk factors and prevention. Here, we are going to have a quick introduction to the invasive fungal infection breakthrough and the factors associated with them in special populations including critically ill and intensive care unit admitted patients, immunodeficient individuals, hematological patients, and solid organ transplant patients. Invasive fungal infection breakthrough is defined as any invasive fungal infection occurring during exposure to an antifungal drug, including fungi outside the spectrum of activity of an antifungal. In addition, the time of invasive fungal infections breakthrough was defined as the first attributable clinical sign or symptom, mycological finding, or a radiological feature. The following figure shows the invasive fungal infection breakthrough with different antifungal drugs. Major improvements have been achieved in the prophylaxis, treatment, and outcome of invasive fungal infections. The antifungal agent of choice for the prophylaxis of invasive fungal infection is triazole. It is also indicated for the prophylaxis of invasive aspergillus and candida infections in severely immunocompromised patients. However, persistence, refractory disease, relapse, or the development of breakthrough invasive fungal infection continue to complicate antifungal treatment. The following figure shows the treatment courses for invasive fungal infections. Factors associated with breakthrough invasive fungal infection are Host factors such as integrity of anatomical barriers and both innate as well as acquired immunity. Moreover, fungal factors include antifungal exposure, virulence, and resistance to prophylaxis as well as latrogenic factors might be the most prevalent reasons for breakthrough invasive fungal infection, which include three major groups of factors. These factors include, firstly, inappropriate antifungal therapy, including the inappropriate selection of antifungals and dosing. Secondly, the insufficient plasma and tissue drug levels despite correct dosing because of unpredictable pharmacokinetics with high inter- and intrapatient variability or incorrect prescription adherence. And finally, the fungal biofilms which are complex, three-dimensional communities that often incorporate bacterial pathogens and are key to fungal persistence, particularly in mixed infections and in the presence of medical devices. The following figure shows factors associated with breakthrough invasive fungal infections. Critically ill and intensive care units admitted patients are individuals who require intensive care and close monitoring due to a severe illness or injury. These patients are at higher risk for various infections, including invasive fungal infections, due to their weakened immune systems and exposure to a higher number of pathogens. Invasive fungal infections are a significant burden for critically ill and intensive care unit admitted patients. For instance, Kenya is a developing country with a high rate of fungal infections. About 7% of the Kenyan population suffers from a significant fungal infection, with recurrent vaginitis and tinea capitis accounting for 82% of the infections. The high burden can be attributed to several factors, including limited access to healthcare, poor healthcare infrastructure, high prevalence of underlying medical conditions, and poor infection control practices. Invasive fungal infection in critically ill and intensive care unit admitted patients can be life-threatening and difficult to treat. In recent years, there have been significant advances in the management of invasive fungal infections in critically ill and intensive care units admitted patients. Management of critically ill and intensive care units admitted patients typically involves improved diagnostic tools, New antifungal agents, a better understanding of risk factors, improved patient outcomes, stabilize the patient's condition, and prevent further complications. The following figure shows the management of invasive fungal infections in critically ill and ICU-admitted patients. Immunodeficiency results from a failure or absence of elements of the immune system, including lymphocytes, 
phagocytes, and the complement system. These immunodeficiencies can be either primary, such as Bruton disease, or secondary, such as immunodeficiency due to human immunodeficiency virus infection. Primary immunodeficiencies underlying fungal infections are chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis, invasive candidiasis, invasive aspergillosis, and endemic mycoses. The following figure shows primary immunodeficiencies underlying fungal infections. Recent global estimates have found 3 million cases of chronic pulmonary aspergillosis, about 223,100 cases of cryptococcal meningitis, complicating human immunodeficiency virus flash acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, about 700,000 cases of invasive candidiasis about 500,000 cases of pneumocystis gerevichii pneumonia, about 250,000 cases of invasive aspergillosis, about 100,000 cases of disseminated histoplasmosis, over 10 million cases of fungal asthma and about 1 million cases of fungal. Keratitis occur annually. The epidemiology of invasive fungal infections in immunodeficiency individuals has changed over the last few decades partially due to the increased use of antifungal agents to prevent invasive fungal infection. Although this strategy has resulted in an overall reduction in invasive fungal infection, a subset of patients develops breakthrough invasive fungal infection with substantial morbidity and mortality in this population. The following figure shows the global prevalence of fungal diseases. The standard and alternative therapeutic approaches for the management of invasive fungal infections include recombinant cytokines, monoclonal antibodies, checkpoint inhibitors, drugs, and cellular therapy. Moreover, immunosuppressive drugs impair the immune system and thus increase the risk of invasive fungal disease, but may exhibit antifungal activity at the same time. Therefore, the development of novel Alternative antifungal approaches that will overcome current limitations and meet therapeutic needs becomes imperative in patients with compromised immunity. Reasonably, the three classes of antifungal drugs, including azoles, echinocandins, and polyenes target structures unique to fungi. The following figure shows the standard and alternative therapeutic approaches for the management of invasive fungal infections. Hematological patients refer to individuals who have blood-related disorders or conditions. These disorders can affect the production, function, and survival of blood cells, such as red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Some common hematological conditions include anemia, leukemia, lymphoma, sickle cell disease, and bleeding and clotting disorders such as hemophilia. The following figure shows blood-related disorders. Several studies have described antifungal resistance as a driver of breakthrough invasive fungal infection in patients with hematologic malignancies. Moreover, the risk for invasive fungal infections increases with the duration and severity of neutropenia, prolonged antibiotic use, and the number of chemotherapy cycles. Therefore, the management of the most important invasive fungal infections in patients with blood malignancies includes prophylaxis appropriate drug treatment, surgery, early diagnosis, a safe environment, immunotherapy, and identification of antibiotic resistance. The following figure shows the management of the most important invasive fungal infections in patients with blood malignancies. Invasive fungal infections are a major problem in solid organ transplant recipients. Overall, the most common fungal infection in solid organ transplant is candidiasis, aspergillosis, and cryptococcosis. The incidence of invasive fungal infection after solid organ transplantation has decreased over the last two decades owing to improvements in managing end-stage disease, enhanced surgical techniques, safer immunosuppressive therapy, and improved anti-infective preventive measures. The following figure shows solid organ transplant. Breakthrough invasive fungal infections have emerged as a significant problem in patients receiving systemic antifungals. The most significant risk factors for breakthrough invasive fungal infections are host factors, fungal factors, and latrogenic factors. 
Moreover, major improvements have been achieved in the prophylaxis, treatment, and outcome of invasive fungal infections. In addition, invasive fungal infection breakthroughs special populations including critically ill and intensive care unit admitted patients, immunodeficient individuals, hematological patients, and solid organ transplant patients. So those populations had a great risk of invasive fungal infections breakthrough due to their weak immune system. And the antifungal agent of choice for the prophylaxis of invasive fungal infection is a triazole.